Hello everyone. Many, many years ago, I discovered this crazy, crazy emulator that was capable of running hundreds upon hundreds of computers, as well as video game systems. And we're going to be testing it out today. Right now I'm loading a retrar from the main user interface. And you can do this by going into the extras, hashy2 folder, and having Clover SNES as a game. But I'm going to load Core. I'm going to load uh, Arcade MAME 2016 MESS. MESS is a multi emulator super system and it was merged with MAME at one point but I'm gonna load that then I'm gonna do the dummy folder I'm also gonna show you how to run these from the main user interface again this is a fairly complicated setup to run this core but uh, right now I'm gonna do it from the dummy folder start directory low content and I could have gone the other way to get there a little bit faster Dummy, and I have a specific setup mess folder here, which I'll show you on the PC in a few. I'm going to load a Coleco game, Coleco Vision game to start with. We'll load Buck Rogers, which I used to own on an Astro Atom computer that Coleco made many years ago. It was on a cassette tape of all things. So I'm loading with this core. And once you get in, you can push L2. And you, you're going to need an L2 button if you want to be able to remap the controls. The way this works here is a little bit different. If you go into the core options here, controls, you are unable to remap the controls here. But you could actually make a remap file with the H mod on my in my core set. You know, remap it. You could have the L2 remap to L1 if you have an SNES controller. And then you could just load the remap file when you install it. But for right now I'm using a controller that is able to use the L2 button. And I'm going to push L2, go to input this machine, and you know how the real ColecoVision, Atari 5200, etc. had a keypad, as did the Intellivision. I'm going to go to keypad 1, and I'm going to temporarily reconfigure this 1 on the keypad to my R1 key on my controller. And if you screw this up somehow, you get to shut down your system and turn it back on, it'll revert back to default, which is no harm, no foul. But I'm going to just leave it that way for now. Now I can push R1 and I'm able to push the number one key on the keypad, which would be skill one, one player. And I have the game going. This is one of the earliest shmups that I've ever played on the Atom computer many, many years ago. And I really like this because uh, once you get out of this first initial stage, it has a, a set of other stages you can get through. Usually when you play a game like Space Invaders and such, you have one single screen that repeats, but then you have games like Gorf and Buck Rogers where you actually have three to four different stages before they cycle around, which was kind of cool at the time. You'll see one of the stages in a moment here. This is also one of the main games that would typically need samples if you run the arcade version. Pretty cool game here. One thing I would recommend doing is each time you run the game, you're going to want to quit back to the main user interface because like the two Nintendo 64 cores and the Sega Saturn core, the memory can max out with your cache and it does not always properly clear. So I'd recommend quitting RetroArch and then reopening. Another thing you can do that is really incredible here. And I'm going to show you this briefly. I'm going to low core again. Arcade MAME 2016. Low content. This time I'm going to load a Casio PV1000 game. It'll be in the mess folder. This is a great home uh, console that came out in 1983. Right here, a PV1000. And I'll load a game called Amadar. If you push L2, you can go to select new machine and you do not need to use this other than for just checking things out. And I would recommend if, if, you, if you're trying to reconfigure inputs and such, shut the system down once you're done because it's going to be nearly impossible to get out of the select new machine mode once you get in it. But it's good to check out what systems are compatible. So watch this real quick. Select new machine. Where it says return the previous menu, it is tough to get to that little option. But I can go through these options here. Here we have uh, one of my friends on YouTube wanted T Caveman to run. Yes, T Caveman is supported on this core. Awesome. But we could also run a few other things here. 
Philips CDI were able to run the PAL version of it, but the NTSC version of it will not work. So keep that in mind, the PAL version will work. But you can go down this list and see all the various systems, and if they're red, they're not gonna work at all. If they're green, they work well. And if they're yellow, orange style, then they'll work, but not exceptionally well. But CDI does work. Neo Geo works. I mean, many of these work, and I'm going to do more videos on these in the near future. But again, if you're trying to configure the controls, it's not going to be easy to get out of the menu here because you cannot go to return the previous menu very easily. But if you shut down the system completely, you'll be able to get back to it no problem. But you're not going to be going into this menu very often anyway. You're just going to want to see what systems run and such. And then you're just going to use the normal MAME options. But I'm going to revert back to the normal game here. Push start. This is a cool game that's a combination of Kicks and Pac-Man. This is also an arcade game. But it, you can see, for a home console, this is actually a really, really good port of an arcade game. A lot like Pac-Man. And <laughs> Kicks. But I'm going to exit back to the main user interface again here. And I'm going to load one game from the main user interface here. And again, these are trickier to do. I'm going to show you on the PC in a minute how to do this. But I'm running this from the main user interface. This is a Game Gear game. And you cannot do your typical uh, bend forward slash command lines with this. You have to do it a different way. But yeah, like Game Gear actually works down here. Pretty interesting. Surprise, surprise. And you know what else runs on here? NES runs on here. But we got Game Gear. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'll temporarily clear the cache by loading another core. I'm going to use the same core I used to load PSP with and exit. What I would do if I'm running the PSP core, I would load 2048, which is also a great puzzle game. Start it. Now that it's started, I can go right back. Load core. And go back to the arcade core and I'll be able to load a game with it because the memory has cleared out of that core. Load content. Start directory. And I'm going to load uh, something else here. One more test game. I'm going to load an NES game. Yes, NES games do run on here quite well. I'll load on 1943. Great shmup game. The next video I do tomorrow is going to be a lot of obscure and amazing shmups that are personal favorites of mine. There are many shmup fans out there. Shmup means shoot them up, but I'm going to cover those tomorrow. Load archive, arcade, MAME 2016, mass core. And I'd recommend sticking to systems that would typically not run on the other cores. You do not need to run arcade games on this. I would stick to running arcade games on MAME 2003, 2010, Final Burn Alpha 2012, and so on. I would stick to run stuff like Casio, ColecoVision, NES, just stuff like that on here. I mean, there's quite a few to go through. You'll discover for yourself, and I'll help you see many of these in action over the next few weeks. But I'm going to load this with uh, the mess core. And see how the memory didn't properly clear out? So I'm going to quit RetroArch. Again, the surefire way of doing this is always to quit RetroArch. And then you'll have no problem. So I'm going to go back to the RetroArch icon. So again, I would highly recommend using this RetroArch icon to initially start the core and then pick one single game. And then when you're done with the game, quit back to the main user interface and use RetroArch again. Or you could load it from the main user interface like this with the appropriate command line. But let's uh, load one more game. Here's the test. Then I'm going to switch over to the PC. And again, this affects the Sega Saturn core, both Nintendo 64 cores, and the MAME 2016 MES core. So load one single game with them, exit back to the main user interface to avoid issues. So load core, arcade MAME 2016 MES edition. And again, MES and the multi-emulator super system merged with MAME code after a certain point. Low content, start directory. Dummy, MES folder, NES. And I'll load uh, the same game that crashed because it did not have the appropriate memory allotted to it to run it. But now it's going to run just fine.
I clear in the memory, we're good to go. And now I, I didn't have to shut my system down, I just had to exit the main user interface and I could do my MAME options again. But if I select new machine again, I'm going to get stuck in that menu until I clear out the memory. I'm not worried about input right now, I mean, but yeah, I can reconfigure the entire NES controller if I'd like to. So 1943 is working great. I mean, this runs exceptionally well on this core. NES games run great. But now I'm going to switch over to the PC and uh, show you the little tutorial on how to set these up. And you can tell it's Capcom just by that uh, significant music there. Unmistakable. Again, these are quite tricky to set up. I'm going to do my best to help you out here. So we're going to actually go to my uh, core set for today. 4718. You're going to have three H mods to work with. And again, when you install the H mods, I would recommend um, power and on your system wait in a few seconds so that you could do the module and install, uninstall tab. Just power on your system, then do this, and then it'll simply copy like a transfer style instead of the old FEL mode. And if you watch my Mortal Kombat tutorials from the last week, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But there are three chords that you can install in the set. You have the typical MAME one right here, MAME 2016 mess. This is the primary core that you're going to need to run this, and there's a readme to the right of it here. Shows all you need to see. And then you have the dependencies, which you're also going to need. But what I'd recommend doing is making a copy of all three of these, which would be the mess dependencies, the dummy BIOS folder, and then MAME 2016. Just copy these all to your Hashi2 directory. And I use the CE edition. And once they're all there, you definitely have to install. This one right here is absolutely required. And even though it's 19 megabytes, it's going to take up a little over 60 megabytes once it's installed. You're going to, for sure, need the dependency one. But once you go in there, to the actual hash folder, you're only going to need the hash files for the systems you run. So if you want to, since you have a backup of these, and say you just want to run some of them, you could actually delete everything you want to delete from here, like that. Say I only want to run NES and nothing else. I'll just uh, leave the NES ones there. Just like that. And delete all the other ones. But if you have USB hosts, it's not an issue. If you're on non-USB hosts, just uh, delete all the ones except that you, the ones you want to run. But here's where things get a little bit tricky here. You're going to go to the dummy folder. And again, this one right here takes up... 56 megabytes, but you can cut it down if you're only running like a dozen or so emulators within the mess emulator. Then here we have a mess dummy BIOS and game folder. And this is a template to make it easy to install them so you can run them on your NAND internal flash memory. And additionally, if you just go into the root here, you can simply just copy this entire folder right over to your flash drive. Go into Hashi, Games. And just copy it right here, just like that. That's all you got to do. But once you go in there, here's where things get really tricky. You go into the mess folder. And each of the ones that you want to run, and I'm actually going to go into my core set to do this, make it easier. Show you exactly what you're working with here. Dummy BIOS. Mess. These are all the different subset systems that I have set up for right now. And you cannot run the games unless you have them in the specific folder. So if I want to run a Coleco game, you have to have the game within the Coleco folder or it will not run. So what I do here to make this happen, I'm going to go into my uh, flash drive, into my dummy folder, into my mess folder. And I'm going to take the Coleco game. Say I just want to run uh, Chuck Norris, whatever. I would copy it into the Clico folder. Now I have that all said and done. 
And then if I want to run the game, and this does require BIOS, many of these do require BIOS, you have to do the BIOS a different way. You have to have the BIOS outside of the folder. So the games go inside the folders, and the BIOS go outside the folders. So I'm going to go to the Coleco BIOS real quick. And I'm going to show you how to do this from the main user interface as well, but I would copy the Coleco BIOS to the outside of all these folders. Not inside Coleco folder, but to the outside of it. Just like that. Now that it's outside the folder, I can run the Coleco game the way I just showed you on the, any, the SNES Classic. Now I'm going to show you where it gets really tricky. I'm going to set up a working folder here and show you how, exactly how I would add a game to the main user interface. Working folder. I'm going to copy the BIOS there. Now I'm going to go into the Coleco folder and copy that game. And what I'm going to do now is just uh, go into my hashi 2 ce Here's where things get really tricky. File, add more games. I'm going to go to that working folder. And I'm not going to add the game. I'm actually going to right click on it and 7 zip it. Now that I have it 7 zipped, I'm going to add that game by itself. Just watch. Now that I have that added, I'm going to go into the hashi2ce directory. I'm going to look at the most recent added game here. And I have it right there. Notice that I have to have the Coleco folder in order for the game to run. So I'm going to actually make a folder right here. Then I'm going to drag this game into it. Then I'm going to go back to Hashi2. I'm going to change this command line to uh, what I would need for the core, which would be MAME 2016 or, May, or MESS 2016. Then right here where it says uh, VAR Games CLV folder, Chuck Norris Zip, I would have to add the subsystem here, subdirectory, which would be uh, Coleco, Chuck Nor. And then I would, I would search for art for it. Sometimes it's easier to find... <laughs> yeah, I could just use uh, Invasion USA for the hell of it here. But if you type in exactly what you're looking for, say Chuck Norris, Coleco, and then go do a Google search, and it has an easier time finding what you need. Just like that. I can find the true artwork for it. But I'm just going to leave that goofy art there. And I'm just going to uh, call it mess. Chuck Norris. And I'll uh, add Coleco as a subsystem here. And this is just for my own preference here. Then when I'm done, I would have to completely exit Hashi too. Because if you do not exit, the command line will not save appropriately. And I'm going to go into... Uh, the same folder I was just in, Hashi2CE. Go to the most recently added one. I'm going to verify the desktop file is correct. You don't always have to do this if you close. See, it's all correct right now because I closed Hashi2 and saved it appropriately. But if I would have just uh, copied this over to the flash drive without checking it, it might have still said Chuck Nord Zip. So now I'm going to just hit the CLV folder. Games NES folder, and then just copy that right to my flash drive. Or you could sync it or export it. Just like that. And if you go into 